Hi, I'm Alan Hills, and welcome to the College of St. Rose's Movie Review Show, A Night at the Movies, brought to you by the Campus Production Club, St. Rose Television. Let's cut to the chase. Summer 2018's greatest and most satisfying blockbuster, Incredibles 2, will be available on digital tomorrow and on Blu-ray November 6th. Out of all the great blockbusters that came out last summer, this one I truly enjoyed the most. Needless to say, the 14-year wait really paid off. So let's get to it, as we have some very special guests following my brief review of Incredibles 2. As I said before, sequels following the first film of a franchise are usually terrible, but Incredibles 2 is somehow a genuine Pixar masterpiece. Returning writer and director Brad Bird did not try to change anything, but instead used improved repetitions that were well thought and truly unexpected. The comedy is especially groundbreaking. Both familiar and new faces fill the movie with the same kind of clever, humorous charm that we all loved in the first film. Michael Giacchino's incredibly jazzy musical score continues to be sophisticated and cunning enough for the film's 1960s aesthetic. While the action and explosions are not as grand as the first one, the thrills are still nothing short of exciting. So please be sure to watch Incredibles 2 if you are by chance not among the billions of people that have seen it already. It's a truly awesome movie that successfully proves one essential fact of life. Comebacks are sweet. Now let's move on to our special guests. One of them is a communications major here at the College of St. Rose and one of SRTV's newest members, Lincoln Murphy. Our other guest is a longtime member of the club as well as the newly elected vice president. Returning to the show to discuss Incredibles 2 for a second time is the one, the only, Juancito, the Cheeto, Monegro. Thank you so much for coming on, guys. This is so awesome to be here together discussing this movie. Thank you so much. Thanks for having yeah. me on again. And Lincoln, it's so great to have you, too. Yeah. First time on the show, right? Yeah. So, Incredibles 2. It, I enjoyed it so much out of all the movies this summer because, you know, we waited 14 years and it... And it successfully satisfied us all. I mean, what was, what part of it did you guys find most special? Like any particular moments that you liked that made it work? What do you guys think? I, I'm finding it hard to think of one thing in particular that stood out because it was all amazing. And I mean, overall, I felt that the whole movie was just a blast of the past. It, it was. It, for somebody that, as I said before, right. was, was very involved with it in... Incredibles 1, mm -hmm. I, coming to Incredibles 2, I had all the same feelings. They were making a lot of references to the older crowd. Right. Um, everything about that style, um, the nostalgia feel, I guess you can say, <laughs> yeah, was, that was being hit in all the right places. I felt that using the same time frame was right. a good choice on their part. Um, because if they didn't use the same time frame, we would have had too, we'd have too much of a gap. And yeah, way too much of a gap. Yeah, it would have felt like two different movies just in the same universe rather than yeah. just a sequel, which was good. I did appreciate that part. Yeah, I yeah. like how they, yeah, they kept it that way. Yeah, none of the kids are grown up. It takes place right after the first one, and that's the reason why it worked. And though most of the plot lines were new, it, it still felt familiar in some way. You know, and exactly. that's what was most satisfying about the movie. And what did you think of... I thought that the comedy was especially hilarious since, you know, Elastigirl's the one being the hero while Bob's got to watch the kids. Those yeah. moments I found, like, particularly hilarious. Don't you agree? I definitely mm. do, yeah. 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 I mean, for the most part, I found that if the humor with it, like I said, came very with the crowd that was coming back. To be completely honest, if it wasn't for this being Incredibles 2, and we had the same amount of jokes and in the same style. And in, in fact, just the, the overall plot of the story with how the, um, how the antagonist was shown and without spoiling anything, how that ended up. Um, I felt like it was very generic in that fashion. And yeah. the only reason that mm -hmm. it had such a high rating was because it was the sequel to one of the most rated four movies, stuff like that. Right. But, um, yeah, I mean, for the most part, with the, with the comedy and with the like, with bringing back the character characters and bringing everybody on a on kind of a flip side with Elastigirl being the main, that gave it a um, different flair, I guess you can say, for the movie that I did appreciate. But then again, it's because I was somebody that returned. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have, guys. Thank you again. It's been incredibly fun, pun intended. <laughs> Not a problem. <laughs> Once again, I'm Alan Hills, and this has been A Night at the Movies. Thank you for watching, and see you next week.